How do I look in there? You don't give a fuck. You ain't check. He's he looking at in your eye like, mm, looking good, like Joe. Like I'm sexy. Right. <laughs> he like looking you good, Joe. I'm feeling sexy. Okay, here we are. I'm very excited about this. Another fantastic episode of the pull up. But enough about all of that. I've actually been trying to get with you for a little while. Do you know that? I had no clue. See. That's why I don't like when management and yeah. this person and that person. I like artist to artist. Yeah, for right. sure. This is great. I'm here with YBN Corday. That's good, bro. Ooh. How are you? Good. How about you? I'm well. I'm well. What would you, <laughs> like, what would you like to start? Well, what were you talking about just now? We were talking about fake, fake bullshit in LA? Uh, nah, just uh, the fake kicking it. Fake kicking it? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, oh yeah, that's what we were doing. I was saying how. I, can, I can't do L.A. but for so long, and it's nothing personal to L.A. It's yeah. just not my, it's yeah. not my, I it, can't. I just, I'm real, like, secluded, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who I, like, make music with or, like, people I hang with, those are, like, like people that's, like, real friends of mine, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually fuck with, like, on a, a real level, you know what I'm saying? And But mm. we are just saying how, like, I don't really be, like, when I'm out here, I don't really be doing like the whole LA shit, like going to every single pop up shit. Cause I think everybody just be fake kicking it. You know what I'm saying? But you, so you've seen the fake kicking it? Yeah, I don't know if it's fake kicking it, but I, that's what I see it as, or like politicking. Do you feel like at some point you're gonna have to politic? Do you feel like at some point you're gonna have to play the game? Do you feel like at some point you're gonna have to fake kick it or network or? Uh, I don't know. I just I just have everything happen organically. Just like you know what I'm saying this right here. Everything I just feel like when shit happen organically the way it's, it's supposed to happen. Everything you know what I'm saying. Like the the music turns out better. The the outcome turns out better. Everything. So I don't know. Like you know. I don't think I'm gonna have to do that. It's 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 like 2019 about to be 2020. I don't think nobody's really playing the game anymore. Mm, or what is think, that? Hold up, think about it now. Think about it. It's 29. You said it right. 2019, 2020. You don't think anybody's playing the game? Not that I know of. Shit. <laughs> Who's not playing it? That's probably a better question. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of dope artists out there. That's I don't, but I don't know though. I don't be inside of like other people's like business. You know, I don't be worried about what other folks got going on. So I don't, I don't even know what playing the game means. I don't know what. Are both parents in your life? I was raised majority by my mother, but uh, like I was raised by a single mom. But like my dad, he just like lived in the other in another state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like in contact with my pops for sure. Like yeah. he, my pops super solid. So this 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 sense of of groundedness comes from where? Cause how old are you? I just turned twenty one. Oh yeah, come on, give it to me, man. But yeah. this sense of groundedness comes from where? Twenty one years old. What do you mean by groundedness? You seem you seem to have a good sense of things early on. Yeah, it's it's something that I was probably naive to at twenty one coming into the game. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I just I just like lived. Life, you know what I'm saying? I just been through it. Not like I live like alone, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, but um, I just been through some shit, you know what I'm saying? Not on, on some like, woe is me shit. Like I had to fight my whole, you know what I'm saying? I don't know shit like that. But just like <laughs> I fucking, I dropped out of college, you know what I'm saying? I went to college for like two years. I was off my dolo. I dropped out. I fucking, I didn't like witness actual shit. I didn't experience actual life. I feel like a lot of people don't like experience life. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. Or just do normal shit. I've been a normal, quote unquote, because I don't even know what is normal and what's not normal. So I don't know what boundary that is. But I just, you know, my I, I got like good OGs. You know what I'm saying? That question was coming. I could hear that. I can normally hear when niggas got good OGs. Yeah, for sure. I got good OGs. And, you know, like, I just live life. You know what I'm saying? Like, for sure. Take me to the start. Uh huh. I, I, I will admit, I don't know very much because, it's all good. because, oh, and I hate to sound like this, but that's all it. cool. I didn't feel like niggas like you made music for niggas like me. Yeah. That's, that's how I felt. That's, that's how I feel about most of the young dudes. Yeah, for sure. And then I'm sitting in my fucking room, minding my business, watching the awards. Mm hmm. The BT jump? Yeah. Yeah. I love her. Yeah, she's incredible. I think her is like the second coming of Prince. Yeah, nah, she's ill. Like live performance, music, play. She played like 15 instruments. Like she's ill. 
Yeah, she's I've, ill. I've seen the live show. All of the, most of the music is great. I, I love, love, love her. So yeah. I'm stopping whatever I'm doing when, when she comes on. Mm. And I happen to love that song. And then here comes you, right? And initially, I'm like, a verse don't belong here. Yeah. Like this is not a conventional song. Yeah. For a verse. So intrigued me when I saw you. I'm like, okay, she put a verse here, mm -hmm. and she picked this young man. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. And I turned it all the way up. Uh huh. And you went nuts. Oh, uh, appreciate that. Was that was ridiculous. It was full of so much. It was so much meat and potatoes in it. Mm. And then I was confused. And I said, wait, wait a second, man. The nigga got initials in front of his name. He got to be a young dude. How's he saying all this? So then I went back and I did a little bit. Of, and I said, oh, the kid can rap. Mm. I said, I got to stop judging the young kids. <laughs> how did, how did, what have you, what have you been through that makes you able to write that verse? That's what I have to know. Yeah. Because you said you've been through some shit. And yeah, the yeah. first thing you said was that you dropped out of college, which to me is like that new age privilege struggle. Yeah, yeah. But that verse ain't sound like that. Yeah, for sure. Nah, fucking, like, like I said, I was raised by a single mom, you know what I'm saying, for my whole life. And not, we weren't like piss poor, but. I was in like a one bed, it was like me, my mom, my little brother, we was in like a one bedroom apartment for like three years in Suitland, Maryland, you know what I'm saying? But, got it. and you know, things got better, like my mom, like she leveled up, you know what I'm saying, and life got better, but I lived in the house with my grandmother for a lot of times when I was growing up too, you know what I'm saying? So I've lived in like, in like a trailer park, you know what I'm saying? I lived in like the trenches of Suitland in a one bedroom apartment. And then also like my mom got a better job and I've lived in like the suburbs for two years, you know what I'm saying, before I went off to school. So I kinda like be living in like a trailer park then living in like the hood of Suitland, Maryland, which is like four minutes away from DC, you know what I'm saying? And then living in like a more suburban area I kind of have like different aspects of life. And then I've been to college for a couple of years and I was a waiter mm -hmm. while at college. You know what I'm saying? I was I was working two jobs while in school, like oh, yeah, paying my own rent. Shit on, uh, who'd you shit on Fridays? Fridays. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was working at Fridays. You I was fucked fu up. I fuck with the... Uh, endless appetizers. Yeah, but some, some shit from Fridays be all right. No, nah, I was working at Fridays. I was working at Texas Roadhouse. And then I was like, you know the niggas that go door to door and like ask you if you want like window service installed in your house or some shit? Yeah. Yeah, like one of those, like for, I was doing- You did that too. Yeah, bro. Oh, you I was, was super annoying. Yeah, nah, for sure I did. Bro, I was working like two jobs at once. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why being a full-time student? Cause you know, you got, you a, when you 18, you a grown man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do your own yeah, shit. My, my son just turned 18. Yeah, you gotta cut him off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Nah, with you. shit, no, no. Nah, no, he's about to go to college. Yeah. And he makes music. And it's such a different game today. I, just, I have fun watching him try to crack it. Yeah. Crack the code. Like, to me, it's almost the same as me watching y'all and how y'all yeah. maneuver out here now. So to hear you say certain shit, it's like, damn, I wish I had, I wish I had that yeah. at 21. It just would have been a different ball game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, off of Fridays, you start rapping when? Uh, like, like taking it seriously or just no. rapping? Like taking it for play, play. Young, like four, five. It's like footage from when I was like four or five rapping. You know what I I'm did, saying? I did see another clip from when you were pretty young. And then I was like ten. That's when, when I was ten. That's when I was like, okay, like hip. That's when I like fell in love with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Cause my folks always played music in the car. You know what I'm saying? Always played. You know, the uh, the gods, you know what I'm saying? They always played that in the car. And then when I was 10, I kind of went, hey, I always listened to it in my own time. I had like this MP3 player and uh, I love the lyrics so much. I think this is the same year that like Rap Genius came out. And fucking, I looked that shit and I started like analyzing those lyrics, like studying that shit, like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, just doing that and then, you know, new influences, you know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, like, you know, obviously, uh, like Travis Scott, Kid Cudi, Kanye, fucking, I can sit here and talk about my influences all day, you know what I'm saying? You know, Jay-Z, Nas, Big L, Eminem, so, so many, so many influences. That's interesting, all these older names. Yeah. To hear it come from you. Kanye and Travis, Zoe, and Cudi, they still fairly new. Come well, Cuddy, Cuddy, and Kanye's more so debut Travis. debut album was... Oh, three, you right. I was, I was five when College Dropout dropped, you right. Cuddy's first single was... 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You damn. So it's just I've been listening to that since so young. You don't even like even like like you saying like like Jay Z and Nas. That that shit don't feel old to me. That's the shit. But them niggas are on, and that's interesting too. Just the hierarchy of and the family tree of hip hop. Like Cudi and Kanye, they are on the God list for this age group, and shit. A lot of niggas in my age group as well. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Once you got five undeniable like great albums. Back to back to back to back, you definitely like put yourself into that. Ye, the, his ability to pivot and change direction with each album, conceptually, mm -hmm. sonically. Yeah. It'll be tough to be repeated. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, sure. back to rapping now. So uh -huh. you start rapping mm -hmm. very early on. When do the friends come in? <laughs> you talking about YBN? I'm or, talking about whoever it is that you mentioned when you say, I make music with my friends. Oh, yeah, okay, my nigga M1 Darton. Uh, shout out M1. I was making music with him from the beginning. Uh, my uncle was a producer. Fucking, you know, everybody got an uncle that make beats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that's true. yeah, my brother M1, we was just really, we stayed in the same neighborhood. We was just in the lab like every day since we was youngest, you know what I'm saying? Just like making music, just rap. I first started off on just that rapidy rap shit, like the lyrical, miracle, spiritual shit, you know what I'm saying? I can tell that from all the niggas you name. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's why I started off on, and then I was like, yo, I need to start making music, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I think I can rap decent. I need to start making like good music, you know, because it's a difference, you, you know what I'm saying? Is. So I started making like mixtapes. I got like four mixtapes that I dropped when I was like younger, you know what I'm saying? So people, it's like, it's just been a process of like just getting better. I realized that when I was like 16, I was like, yo, I need to start making good music for yeah, I can rap, you know what rapping. I'm saying? Not even fuck rapping, but just like make good music because that's what lasts the longest, you know what I'm saying? That's what really touches the people, not just me fucking robbing all these big ass words, you know what I'm so saying? And that's what I started off doing. Even in that old video, I was just fucking rhyming big ass words, you know, that shit, you know, it don't help people. But there was a pocket. Yeah. There was a cadence. Mm hmm and there was a bounce and a bop and a rhythm. Yeah, that, that's, what that's, I, it. that's that's it. That's what I noticed yeah. about it. I was like, damn. And it was a confidence. Yeah. Which is missing in a lot of the new niggas. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so when does the crew come? YBN? Yes. So we all Are met. Are these your real life friends? Yeah, nah, those, those are my brothers. So we, they, Namir and Jay and uh, Glizzy, they all met on Xbox Live a couple years ago. Not even a couple years ago, like fucking 2010. And uh, I met and I married through my brother Simba like in 2017 and we just like 2016, I believe. And we just always like whenever we was in the same city, just on some Internet shit, whenever we was in the same city, we just all link up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we just like kind of built this YBN shit like through that. Because like, the acronym is like for young boss niggas because we we're just like, fuck it. You're a young boss nigga. Just fuck with us. So it's just on that type deal. OK, so you like these niggas enough to rap with them. Mm -hmm. And this is, but not, we wasn't even rapping together at first. It was just like on some homie shit. Just kicking it. Yeah, just kicking it. And then that developed into you know, was, like a relationship. Nine sure. times out of ten, when niggas kick it, they rap together. <laughs> if there's a studio available. I, I, listen, I was in a few groups myself, but then, mm -hmm. then when you start trying to not split money with people. Yeah, for sure. It's like... Yeah, we're, but the thing is, we're all a collective of individuals. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what I make... What Jay makes, you know, none of us touch it. What Namirin makes, none of us touch it. What I make, nobody else touch it. You know what I'm saying? You kind of, you eat what you kill type thing. Yeah, I've heard the saying. Yeah. You named a lot of rappers earlier. Let's mm -hmm. talk about collectives. Okay. Rank some collectives for me. Rank? Rank of collectives. What collectives? Uh, you named the rappers that inspired you. What, okay. what collectives inspired you? Uh, you got to go with Outkast, you know, duo. You know what I'm saying? That's like number one. Uh... Like, what, it's funny, Collectives is always on some just hip-hop shit. Collectives more, it was just straight, just pure hip-hop. So you got Outkast, that's number one. Um, got De La Soul. Okay. Got, um, can you count Rockefeller as a collective? I would. For real. I, I, you had, I would count them. Yeah, Rockefeller. Fucking, I, I'm uh, counting Rough Riders. Yeah, Rough Riders off Bucks. Uh... Cash money. Oh yeah, cash money. No Fuck. limit. I'm counting them too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, oh, that that makes it easier. So, uh, 
You gotta throw Wu Tang in there, obviously. 100%. Uh, yes. I was fucking with Jedi Mind Tricks, man, early. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Fucking uh, shit, Slaughterhouse, you know. Yeah, hey, uh, throw us in that bitch. Yeah, nah, for real. You're fucking uh, right. Let me see. What was that? Yeah. So I, you just I, it's got not, a this lot is just, like, in, just in, and this is in no order, by the way. I'm just like naming them. But uh, yeah, so like, yeah, Outcast, fucking, you know, uh, so Rockefeller, you Rough Riders, all that. So how does it feel then? Because this is what I think about when it, when it comes to my son, because he got my. Aftermath. Got even Whoa. though it's a label, bro. But that's what Rockefeller Whoa. is. That's a collective. What's collective? What, what are we counting with aftermath? I mean, if you think the Chronic two thousand one had exhibit, oh, come on. I mean, I mean, bro, you come on. That's come like come on. You have you to can't do that. If yes, you can. Who's what, the collective? I mean, yeah, you're right. But I'm just saying, like, through, I was just saying, when you think of, we just said, yeah, you're right, because Ruff Rylers, Rockefeller, but just Aftermath's imprint on music is just so fucking Dre. undeniable. Yeah, Dr. Dre's imprint on music is so, he's been, like, the 80s, you know, N- NWA, 90s, fucking Tupac, Snoop Dogg, 2000s, Eminem, 50 Cent, The Game, Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? So It's impressive. His umbrella is... Just he's the the god, and then he created other gods. One hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? That's like or forever music, gods. huh? Or found other gods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you taking me down like memory lane with all this, yeah. with all this shit, and you throwing me off track. You get a deal when? Uh, you get a deal when and how? Last year, a uh, partnership really. Just was uh, just building over time. Wait, time out, because uh-huh. you kids confuse me when y'all start using the word. Partnership. Yeah. So what does that mean? So Art at War, and uh, which is like uh, like the label uh, with Atlantic. It's like we have a partnership with Atlantic. What does partnership mean? Like we work together. Like we work like a partnership. Like you would you have if like I, a wife. That's a partnership. It's also a, a business arrangement. Yeah. So when I was signed to Def Jam, was it a, a partnership? Shit, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's what, all right. Don't make me look up the word partnership. We were both working together. Mm-hmm. I, I'm saying I don't know what your like I'm situation. You, okay. I was I was a signed act okay. on the label. However, mm-hmm. we were working together. Got we it. had mutual interests. Got so, it. I mean, it was still a partnership. Yeah. But I don't think partnership means that today. Yeah. Which is why I gotta ask. What does it mean? Because it means so many different things. It's nuanced. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 it so means many. You get to keep your shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I creatively control everything. You know, like my whole my whole uh, project, the Lost Boy. Like no label heads, no management had any say. You know, with the creatives. You know, and I, I'm a very appreciative of that because a lot of people don't have that luxury. You, you know what I'm it. saying? So uh, that's one sense what it means, and you know, yeah. I get I, I get to do my own shit. Like they just let me do what I do. You know what I'm saying? As far as it's everything with the timing, with the creative shit, with the marketing. You know, I, I'm very hands on in everything. But what do they do? They do what they supposed to do. They I, I don't give know them, what they supposed to do. I never knew what they were supposed to do. I give them the layup. I give them an easy layup, and then they motherfucking slam dunk that shit. Who that, determines the slam dunk part? The fans. Okay, this is getting somewhere now. Okay. The fans determine if the label slam dunked it. How can they determine that? What they do, like, it's kind of... I'm very confused to, like, what you're asking exactly. Like, okay, I'm, okay, I'm, actually... I'm, I'm, let me, all right, so let me be very blunt. Okay. In, in this partnership, uh-huh. what are your expectations of your partner? Oh, to, to just put it out there. Okay. To make it visible. Make it just do their job. Fucking, yeah. Which they do. Is that not contradictory? Didn't I see something from you the other day before the album dropped that uh-huh. said, I don't give a fuck about any of that? Oh, I don't care about sales at all. At all. But I'm saying it's just their job to just do what it's supposed to do. With my shit, 
when you make good music, which you did, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you make good music, I'm more worried about the uh, the long term. With this one, I'm just worried about long term. You know what I'm saying? Just with music in general, just taking incremental steps. Cause we seen, I'm sure you've seen so many artists. They have a crazy first week. And nobody gives a fuck about the, the album like after the first two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll have a great one album and they'll burn themselves out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my thing is, I, I just worry about making good music. And that's why I said the fans determine everything. You know what I'm saying? It's no like... They determine whether this wheel is going to yeah, continue. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, a, it's just incremental steps you know versus frequency. escalators. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people have a fast rise. And a, a slow de and a fast decline. You know, I'm Quick fall. I'm here for like I'm playing a long term game. I'm gonna be making music at a high level, at the highest level for twenty years. You even, know, so and that's a conscious decision you make, even while seeing everything in this microwave era. Yeah, is that from the OGs? Yeah, and just the blueprint has been laid. You know what I'm saying? Like just this kind of. I'm a student of, of music, you know what I'm saying, of hip hop. And with that, I'm a student of the business aspect as well. And, uh, and just study the patterns, because history repeats itself, especially in music, you know what I'm saying? So more so, just, just follow the blueprint that's been laid. Don't fucking burn yourself out. Don't drop an album every four to six months, because you know what I'm saying, the going is good. Don't fucking take every brown paper bag. You no, know, every three, four years, though. Yeah, no, 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 I ain't gonna do that. Don't, uh... Don't take every brown paper bag. Don't that's take every brown paper one. bag. Yeah, that's a bar. Don't fucking, you know, like, don't do a feature with every nigga who got 30 to 50 bands for you. You know what I'm saying? Don't fucking do every club that got some bread for you. You know what I'm saying? Just don't, don't water down you. It just depends what you in this for. If you in for the, for, for the bread, which I am not, like, I'm into music shit because I love making music. You know what I'm saying? I just love everything about hip hop, just about music in general. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for some folks, they just want to come in and get the bread and that's lovely, you know what I'm saying? That's a young nigga who's able to change his whole fucking life and break generational curses by doing this music shit. Even if he don't give a fuck about the music shit, he able to provide for his family, take care of his moms, his or her moms, you, you know what I'm like saying? you feel like you're that person in your family that changes a generational curse? Oh yeah, for sure, broke it. Broke it all the way. My yeah. grandmother was a sharecropper. You know what I'm saying? My grandmother had to drop out of school in fourth grade, you know, to, to help, you know, she's a, the fucking help. You know, she was born in 1933, you know? So, uh, and that's why I went to college, you know, because I was going to be like the first within my immediate family to graduate, you know? So it was like a bigger yeah, thing a big to thing. me. Yeah, yeah, it was a bigger than me. Like, Shit, I'm still, I still got loans, nigga. You know what I'm saying on that shit. I still got Sally Mae. You know, I took out hella loans to go to school. You know, they give niggas, they give you aid, but fucking. Uh, so when you left, was that a big thing to have to explain to like your family? Yeah, I was already, I already had like, no, I just knew, I already dropped out before they knew. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I just was kind of just living in the college. You know what I'm saying? Like I dropped out like. A semester before I like told them, but I know I couldn't dare tell them without having like some Somebody. sort of yeah exactly. So I waited till old niggas dropped, and I had like millions of views, and I was like, "Yo, I'm dropping out of school." By the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to let them know. But and they was That's like, a caveat." Yeah, exactly. And they was like, "What?" Oh, I mean, at <laughs> first, you know, they were against it, but who the fuck wants to hear their their son about to drop out of school to become a rapper? If your son tells you that. You mean like you're you know you you are you were a rapper are a rapper whatever, fucking if he said told you that what are you gonna say? I'm a I'm a throw party, but that's me. I'm weird. Yeah, but I'm a little confused. I'm still trying to wrap my head around him wanting to pursue music and go to college. Yeah, I don't see how it's possible. But yeah. I never went to college. That's yeah. my experience. I have to not project that. Yeah. Uh, and he's going for, what's he doing? Taking business marketing. Like, yeah. like as a nigga that never, I ain't graduate high school. Yeah. So, like, I take pride in my son's graduation, high school graduation was my, me and my dad's first time at a graduation. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead and go to college. I'll pay for it. You want to yeah. rap in there? You want to fuck in there? Whatever you want to do, go get your own experience. I was yeah. going to ask you what that college experience was like, because I don't know shit about it. Every time I hear a nigga talk about it, it's just fucking yeah. partying. 
vices. Mm-hmm. I feel like in debt. Yeah, for sure. Fucking uh. Why well, you ain't paid off your debt yet? Don't you got money? You got money. I debt, see you pull up. Yeah, yeah. Debt is debt is college debt is good debt though. There's no such thing as good debt, but. Actually, I'm gonna pay. I have no reason why I didn't. I'm just on some nigga shit. <laughs> there I have we no go. reason why. I was trying to like think of like a, a, a smart way to articulate that, but Fuck I just ha- I have no clue. I'm gonna I'm pay that shit back. Is it a lot? It's like I don't know. <laughs> I have no I have no clue. I have no clue. I was just like fuck it. But uh, I felt like what you said earlier about college is like a privilege, but not necessarily anymore. College is like damn near the norm, even for, you know, underprivileged people, because they make it very, act- because they want you to fuck, it's a scam, one, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, um, did you know that when you went? Oh, yeah, for sure, I was like, man, this is some bullshit, my brother M1, he was like, I'm not going, like, nigga, you got that shit, I was trying to convince my, he was like, you got that shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like, you got that shit, but I was just on some, I didn't have a choice, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I was just like, fuck it, I'm a fucking, blow up before I graduate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real, I was like, shit, I'm gonna blow up before I graduate anyway. So I was like, let's thug it out. But college, I mean, it was, it was, I learned shit like the first semester I went there. Then after that, I was like, okay, this is some bullshit. It's so easy to become like depressed while you're in college. It's so, it's terrible for like the mental health. Speak to me about that. It's just, it's just so much shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that goes on in college. Like you got the, uh, you you thinking about one you're in debt as soon as you go there and that's always going to be in the back of your head. I I owe these motherfuckers. I owe somebody something. You know what I'm saying? You got to work. You know to uh you know some people don't have to work in school, but I had to work. You know what I'm saying? And uh, which is I feel like most people do work. Mm-hmm. My son gonna work. Yeah, for sure. Put him to work, man. He going to work. Put him to work. That's man. happening. But uh, it's just I feel like a lot of. And just in, in, in black households in general, we don't like look at mental health enough. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you tell your parents, you know, I'm sad or whatever. They'll be like, nigga, you got a roof over your head and food to eat. The fuck you sad for, nigga? You know what I'm saying? It used to be taboo. Yeah, and it's, uh, and it's almost, I feel like parents take offense if you tell them you're depressed. Some do. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't feel offended. But uh, I wasn't like fucking, you know, like, ever like suicidal or no shit like that. But I feel, I feel like, huh? Congrats. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I never heard that it'd be a part of someone's college story and their experience, the mental health aspect. Oh yeah, bro, niggas be depressed as shit. And like, and we talk, and then everybody's depressed and niggas just in college and we all just talk about it on some like funny shit, on some casual shit. Like, yeah, nigga, I cried myself to sleep. Yeah, I thought about killing myself yesterday, but you know. Regular shit. shit. We talk about how that isn't in, in like black house, some black households. Hip hop was like this last decade. What do you mean? You couldn't say, hey, I have a mental health problem. Oh, yeah, and niggas gonna laugh your ass out. Yeah. <laughs> like, for real. Oh, this nigga, oh, especially yeah. the internet, they were like, oh, this nigga uh, just trying to make excuses or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel like some people, not in hip hop, but in the industry, I. Mm, let me choose my words carefully. Think about it. I feel like people exaggerate their mental health sometimes. But who am I to say that some, because I don't know that person, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like some. Oh, I say it all the time. Yeah. Because it's, it's, important, to, it's important to note. Mm. It's, not, it's not something that we can afford to become uh, trendy. Yeah. Like, we have to be able to, it can't become the boy that cried wolf. Yeah, for I sure. Guess. And, and Yeah, hip-hop, that's true. We, in hip hop, we have a tendency yeah. to make things trendy. Like I was a little worried when, when Logic put that record out with the suicide number as the, uh, the hot suicide hotline is just <laughs> like, fam, all right, there's a lot yeah. going on. But <laughs> he wasn't the only one. Yeah. But yeah, good way to duck up out of that. Because. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those you, are dope shoes, by the way. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, these are some of my favorites. Oh, nice. Do you, um, you said that, that mental health in college, but mm-hmm. entering this, this crazy world. Yeah. Does that concern you here? Uh. Because these niggas is lunatics. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can see how niggas get, you know what I'm saying, quote unquote crazy too, because it's just a lot of shit you got. It's a lot. Millions of niggas online, you know what I'm saying, saying shit or whatever commenting about your life 
It's, it's a lot of shit, but I feel like it's rich nigga problems also. <laughs> what was a rich nigga problem? What is a rich nigga problem? Yeah. One one time out, uh, mm. like uh, like artist problems. I'm sure you have several rich. You're a rich nigga. You you have several I rich okay nigga problems. I do all right. You know, like like oh fuck man, I gotta fucking drop this shit by this and this because I don't want to drop the same week as this nigga, <laughs> and I gotta you know what I'm saying like fucking that's I got this show. Y'all, that's what y'all gotta worry. And about. I got this show, and I don't feel like doing this punk ass Joe Budden interview, and oh. then after that I gotta you know what I'm yeah. saying yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah, no, no niggas, those are really wrong. Yeah for real. Yeah no. And that's niggas be like, man, I'm so niggas will take that and be like, fuck, I'm so fucking, you know. So I don't know. You don't sound like you're here to make many friends. Uh <laughs> Am I the only one that got that impression? <laughs> he sound like, listen, man, you niggas is lunatics, and I'm gonna be over here. Uh no, nah, I wanna say that because I feel like hip hop is uh is a community. You know what I'm saying? It's like a real family community, you know? It's uh it's not the best. It's like regular family. We ain't the best family. You know what I'm saying? We got our, our crazy people in our family. I got crazy people in my family. We got our people in our family that got their shit together. I got people in my family that got their shit together. But hip hop is really a family though. Like, uh, we, we embrace our own. We protect our own. You know what I'm saying? Within this culture. Cause and we embrace them and protect them too. Yeah, for sure. But our shit is so fucking sacred. We just got to start being more fucking sacred over our shit because our culture is just so fucking sacred. We are the number one influencers of all music, all Period. entertainment, of all, of all entertainment in general. We are the number one influencers. Most impactful genre, most influential genre, most, um, most groundbreaking genre, most rebellious genre. Like, we're number one, you know what I'm saying, by far, in every fucking statistical category. How can we, how can we be more sacred? We just too nice. Black people, we too nice. We forgive, we let niggas in, who don't give a fuck about our shit. Not, we let them in, you know what I'm saying? Not niggas, but yeah. We let motherfuckers in who don't give a fuck. We, we embrace them. We fucking give them out. Can we be the gatekeepers to something that we don't we don't? There's no it? such thing as a gatekeeper. Ah, think. there we go. Yeah. Give it to me. With the internet and the way shit is, it's like I was saying before. Like That's what I said. That's, that's, what that's I why said, I was saying like I don't really like give a fuck about numbers because I know the only numbers I care about is when I'm on tour and how many asses is in them seats. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what that's what I learned. Like that's where you really determine where you stand as an artist. And I'm just building up block by block on that. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know like where you really stand as an artist. Cause there's niggas who have like 30 million followers but can't sell out the Roxy. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just building though your core audience, your fans, and how you do that is be transparent as possible in your music. Just be authentic to yourself and your music. That my shit is just my life, you know, like I'm I'm starting to work on new music now, but I'm like, yo, I gotta live life because all my music is based on real life experiences, things that I've been through, things that I've experienced, things that I've witnessed other people go through in my surroundings, you know? So I feel like and I kinda went on a tangent. It's fine. To what was the I'm original gonna, point? Oh, you took me on a tangent. But. Okay, what was your tangent? This is a t I feel like I this whole get... conversation, bro, has been a tangent of a tangent of a tangent of a tangent. Probably so. Yeah. Take me to touring. Okay. How is the touring now? I, I you know, I've only been in. I've, I dropped my uh, my name is, which is my very first music video I did. I dropped that a year ago, so that's kind of where I count where I started, but really you don't start until you have a body of work out. Like, The Lost Boy was my very first body of work, period. You know, that's been out. But yeah, I mean, I, I was on tour. I started off, I went on tour with Juice World. That was fucking fun. And then I went on my headlining tour. We sold out everything, like 500 cat venues. But small, I, I wanted it like that because I was able to really like build and connect with my audience. Intimate. You know what I'm saying? More intimate. Were you really able to connect and build with them? Uh, and I'm about to do more touring this year. Festivals. Festivals, all that good shit. Have you done any? Yeah, I did a bunch of, every festival in Europe, fucking US, everywhere. Tell me about that truck that you pulled up in, because I was thinking about getting one, and the niggas told me that I would be corny if I got one. You, you want to be corny. In New York. They in, said New York. in New York. In New York, man, in New York, I don't even fucking, 
potholes. Yeah, I just just straight straight truck. taxis, straight taxis and uh and Uber X's, Hondas for me in in New York or what or Uber Suburbans and whatever, nigga. That's Rich nigga shit. yeah, 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 yeah. Uber XL <laughs> through you know uh yeah Suburbans, Hondas, all that. You'll catch Corday in the Uber X at your local Chick Fil A. You'll catch me coming out of a Honda Accord going into Chick Fil A for sure in New York. Everywhere. You'll definitely catch me. And How often that. you come to New York? Not that often, when yeah. I have to. It's a dope city, though. I feel like I cook up very good there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Energy. Yeah. Energy. When I'm back home, whenever I go back home to my, uh, my mom's spot, I still drive my same car, which was like my very first car, which is like a fucking 01 Volkswagen Jetta, because it gives me like nostalgia, and I'm inspired to write from it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And uh, it was a classic car. Yeah, it's a piece of shit though. Piece of fucking shit. Listen, I had a '93 Ford Escort. It was a hatchback, and mm-hmm. it was turquoise. This mm-hmm. was as an artist. Damn. That shit was like to the ground. Was tinted windows. I used to love that car, mm-hmm. but then it got towed because uh, I parked it somewhere. I shouldn't have parked it. And, it. and then when it cost more to get it out than I paid for, I think I paid seven hundred dollars for that car. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't get it because they wanted like three grand. Tragic. I had, I had attachment issues. I'll I mean, be the same way. This whole interview, I've been trying to figure out. You have such a long-term plan, and when I look in the long term, I see everybody else using music as an audience builder to take mm. the audience and do something else with it. Mm. But I don't hear any of that in your plan. Yeah. Everything is long-term. Everything is well thought out, calculated to see results at a later time. Yeah. I just can't keep trying to figure out how that is. Like you I'm, said, I'm beyond. blown away by that. Yeah. Do you do is is you don't see yourself doing anything else? Yeah, I can, but I just rather focus on music. I just rather because that's the foundation of it. I feel like when you tailor off, like into if you wanted to do act, I would do like I would do some fly shit. I, I want to start like other business ventures. I want to become like a fucking like real estate tycoon. You know what I'm saying? I want to. Get into, you know, a bunch of different shit. Like, get my family shit popping. Open, like, a fucking mom and pop barbecue spot in North Carolina or some shit. You know, a bunch of shit. Get my family, to get the business started up and get my families involved to run those businesses. You know, just yeah. creating, you know, all type of income. You know you about to pop. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably, I'm, it's all written down, you know. And, uh, but, yeah, but I just know music is just the, the foundation of it. Because, like, I don't want to, like, say I start acting. I don't want to get into that too soon, and that shit fucking up my music. You know what I'm saying? Like by me, like, cause whatever I do, whatever art I'm into, or whatever I'm into at that time, I'm like zero gravity focused right into it. Like when I was making like the Lost Boy project, I didn't give a fuck about nothing else. I ain't do no interviews. I was like, I was like turning down shows. You know what I'm saying? Offers, cause I was like, yo, this is the only fucking thing I'm focused on. I was like fucking gaining hella weight and shit. I ain't give a fuck. I just wanted, my whole thing was eat, sleep, and finish this fucking project. You know what I'm saying? That's just how my mind Are you operates. Compulsive obsessive? Huh? Compulsive obsessive? What does that mean? I, I know what those words mean, but like, I didn't get the context, whatever. Um, but yeah, so whatever I focus on, I'm, I just like, I just be hyper focused on that in a very like linear way. So just only that one thing, you know. Did you see the top fifty list? Yeah, <laughs> you top. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're honored to be here right now. Yeah, it's the top three. Yeah, <laughs> damn. But fuck that list. Fuck, fuck the order of that list. Uh-huh. Um. Did you ever bother to put one of those together? By the names you listed, I would assume that you had to. A top 50? I don't, mm, I don't know, because fucking music is so subjective. subjective. So, like, who am I to, like, I would keep that very internal. I wouldn't, like, post that publicly, because <laughs> niggas start bashing you based on your fucking Opinion. musical opinions as a fan. I'm right. If, when niggas do those lists, they do it as a fan of their personal opinion, you know? So it's no fucking right or wrong. It's true. To that. It's true. I laugh when you, I'm, all right, you're gonna try and get somebody else to believe that they don't like what they like. Yeah, so how, so where were you at when you made that list? <laughs> JK, that was a joke. I didn't make the list. 
<laughs> I didn't make that list. But what I will tell you, homeboy uh-huh. home that did make that list, uh-huh. uh, the Brew Podcast, that's who made the list. Got it. Uh, I went and listened. Tr- uh-huh. And homeboy thoroughly explained everything on the list. Damn. He wasn't he wasn't dumb by yeah. any means. <laughs> And not because I was <laughs> like the nigga was not dumb. He wasn't dumb. The nigga was obviously highly intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga was obviously no, but I, I'm saying that not really because of where he placed me, mm-hmm. but just because of his explanation. I'm never mad at at, at disagreements. Yeah, for as sure. As long as you could articulate how you got there, yeah, then great. It makes for amazing dialogue. Yeah, and that's what he did. Yeah, for sure. It was entertaining, yeah. and not because I was three. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let me see. What else do I need to get from you? I don't care about who you're listening to now. You don't care about my top fifty-three placement. Um, <laughs> the album. The album I love. Oh, dope. Damn, I forgot who you dropped with. Who did you drop with? On the same day. Who dropped the same day as me? Uh, you dropped with a few niggas. Yeah, yeah, no, a bunch of niggas dropped. Uh, Young Dolph and Keith Lock, they dropped. It was crowded out yeah, there. Yeah, it was super crowded. Uh, NF dropped. Uh, Chance dropped. Oh. Chance dropped, mm-hmm. yes. Yo, how do y'all be feeling about Because y'all don't know who, who's dropping when y'all yeah. drop. Yeah. Do y'all want this to, the space to yourself, or do you want to drop with your peers? Shit, I'd rather be the only nigga that dropped that whole day in music. I'd rather no other nigga dropped in country and R and B. That's what I would think yeah. too. There's not a way to find. There's no way to find out now. Uh, I mean, that's kind of. And when you find out, yeah. can't you just move some shit real quick because it's mostly digital? Yeah, you you could, but I feel like because the way music is being like rolled out now at such a high volume, it's it's going to be fucking impossible. Like, say it. Okay, say if I wanted to move my shit a week later. Nigga, Drake dropped the next week. You know what I'm saying? So it's like every week is going to be, and then Rick Ross dropped the week after that. You know, it's always going to be a, a major ass artist who dropped the same week as you. Nine times out of ten. You know what I'm saying? So it's just something that's like, I think it's dope because it's a lot of good music that's coming out right now. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake shit, I, I, I re-fell in love with the music that he dropped on yeah, the Care I'm, Package. I'm shit. conflicted about that, by the Yo, way. Yo, 5A, it made me, because it, it brought me back to a time, because I was like ninth grade, eighth grade when most of those songs dropped. So it just brought me back to like where I was when that shit dropped, like fucking 5 a.m. I, I realized I have, I made a music video to 5 a.m. in Toronto back in the day. Like for real, like 5 a.m. in Toronto, fucking... Draft day, the Jodeci back, the How About Now, the Girls Love Beyonce, like that shit brought me back, you know. So that was, I felt like that was. But didn't dope. you have all the records already? What do you mean? Like in your possession somewhere? Like I had all those songs. They was on SoundCloud. Computer. They was on SoundCloud, but it's helped. Now they on my Apple Music or and Spotify and Title and Amazon Music. I use all of these streaming services. Any preference? <laughs> any, any preference one over the other? Nah, I love them all. They all they all have great. No, nah, I'm dead ass serious. I'm dead ass fucking serious. They all have dope playlists. They all have like dope ways in which they uh curate those. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, like like Tidal has like be having like live streams of like concerts, fucking Apple Music, be having um, you a, lot of a bunch of shit. Yeah, for real. Spotify be having like dope exclusive interviews with artists, like the Rap Caviar interviews and like the, the shows and shit. So all of them are dope. Do you feel like we're getting our just due from the streamers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's way, it makes it better for the artists. Like I was saying before, with streaming, it's just so easy to share music. Even though word of mouth is still the number one way that music moves. It will moves. always be. Always the always number be. one way that it moves effectively. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, if somebody sends it to you on Twitter, Instagram, like, oh yeah, this song's dope. But like when somebody tells, go out there way like, yo, you heard this new Corday shit, this shit was dope. You know, you're going to like go back and tell somebody, you know. How did you feel seeing all that? Yeah. Did you did you see all that? It was a lot of praise. Yeah, yeah, it was a, like, it felt really public praise. Yeah, nah, it was a lot of love. That shit felt really fucking good. Cause I threw, you know, it's funny. I had a show that night uh, where the project dropped, and I fucking threw up. Like I, li- I was just, I don't know why, I was just nervous. Before, or after the show? No, before the show, but like at the same time when the Lost Boy dropped, it was like it dropped at midnight, and I literally threw up at like twelve o five. Got it. Like. 
Actually, it was 905 because I was West Coast for the show. It was in L.A. at the Novo, and I fucking threw up and then went on stage and threw up again and then went to sleep. Not on stage, right? Yeah, not on stage. How was the show? It was fire. It was a good show. A good yeah, show. I saw, like, older niggas mm-hmm. bigging your album up. Royce, yeah. I saw it. Shit, I, it was just people I would have never yeah. expected to be uh, like... Mm. It's love. I know how that used to feel for me on release day. It was a few days I even cried, like just mm. reading, just reading shit. Yeah, I did. That's like, what you do it. That's what you do it for. Yeah, some of us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cause niggas don't gotta do that. Niggas don't gotta show love. Other artists was showing other artists that I admire too, that I am a fan of. Cause I'm still a I'm a huge fan of so many artists that's out right now. Like, I don't do no fake kicking it, but if I'm a fan of you and I walk past you at a festival, I'm going to tell you. You know what I'm saying? I'm be like, yo, I yeah, fuck with way. your shit. Your music is hard. But I feel like everybody listens to each other's music, but don't tell don't each other. It. This music shit is an actual family. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. So if I fuck with somebody's art, you know, I tell them. One thing is to tell them in person, but to do it publicly, to show love, you know, it, it really meant a lot to me. It without was, without you know, asking people. for I can always tell when the, the dudes is asking for it, like, yo, put this up. Yeah, yeah. So you fuck with them. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, just gen- and I ain't asked nobody. You know, I'm cool with so many, you know what I'm saying? Heavyweights, but I didn't ask a damn person. Humble brag. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But I, I say that to say just straight organic shit. Everybody who did it did it because they genuinely like loved or appreciated the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause you can tell if like somebody sent that text like yo, <laughs> I can't. I can see it all day long. I, I get a bunch of them texts mm. and DMs, and it's like, fam, you get the fuck out of here. I'm not posting nothing. Yeah. All right, racks though. Mm-hmm. Did I get? Did I miss something in that song? What the fuck are y'all talking about? Nah, the, <laughs> the song was hard. It's uh, what the it's, fuck are y'all talking about on there? She's basically saying. Like, it's kind of fucking in the hook. Like, it's saying how we try to use, uh, like, material things. Oh, if y'all two I'm, niggas don't knock it off, We man. got other... We, nah, that shit is hard. That shit is hard. That's you sleep. not hard, man. It's not for you. It's not for you. You are not the, inten- the intended audience for that song is not... Who is it, then? It's not... But, one, it's, good, it's a good song. You know what I'm saying? Subject, but this is what's beautiful about you music. You two niggas shouldn't be, you and her should not be in the studio and come out with some metaphor uh, meaning of racks. I, we got other shit, too, that I'm going I'm to play you. It's hard. Oh, I believe it. I don't think y'all two went in there and made that and left. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Mm-mm. I killed y'all on my podcast. Because y'all too dope for that. <laughs> nah, that's not, I ran to that shit. <laughs> Uh, but wait, why are y'all recording so much music? She's just dope. She's a dope she's ass amazing. artist. She's amazing. And a dope person. Like, she's she's the shit. But she don't fuck with niggas neither. Yeah, for sure. She definitely, like, just stays. But like, I like people like that. Yeah, for sure. Why does it seem like most people today is, like, I, w- I won't say introverted. Yeah, secluded. I feel, because yeah. you gotta protect your energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like I was saying earlier, like, I don't fake kick it. All the people you see me like with publicly, those are like my genuine like homies. You know what I'm saying? Those are like genuine friends of mine. I don't so, know much about your uh, your um, man, but he's seen it pop off a lot. Who? Amir. I think every time I see a video of Amir, he popping off at somebody. Probably. But uh, yeah, I feel like everybody. I feel when when I was saying like I don't fake kick it, I don't politic. I'm not the only nigga with that like mindset. Everybody, I feel like everybody in music does that. It's and we're in a, a beautiful space, but majority, majority that I that I know and I see, I don't know. But I feel like most people just let things happen organically and naturally because you can hear it through the music. If somebody's like, "Shit, well, I'm up, I'm hot, you hot, let's make a song together and put that shit out," you know what I'm saying? Niggas can tell. But uh, this is my favorite energy. Like, yeah. Like, but game. back in the day, I was t- I was just having a convo. I was like, yo, back in the day, nigga, nobody fucked with each other. Nigga, it was just straight. If you were Rough Riders, you did music with the Rough Riders. If you was on Rockefeller, you did music with the niggas on Rockefeller. If you was on, you know, all that shit. Whatever, you know, collective you was with. Or you, you only did shit with your niggas. You know, now music is like very integrated. Yeah, you know? y'all unified things and yeah. made friends. Yeah, it's dope, y'all though. It took it's all dope. the competitive spirit out I, of it. I'm still competitive. But if you're competing, you're... I compete with myself. I don't like... But I'll listen to somebody's shit. 
I'm, by this competitive, I'll listen to somebody's like project album. I'll be like, oh, this is really dope. I know I gotta, I gotta, this inspire me to do better for my shit. What you was know the what last I'm saying? project that did that for you? Hmm. Well, it's been a while. Uh, All right, well, what do you listen to currently? Let's do that. Currently? To be honest, man, I just been bumping my own shit. For real. Not even the Lost Boy, just like other shit I'm working on. But when you do that, is it work? Nah, or are you- it's both, it's both. When I do it, I'll be like, okay, I can add this to this song. I could have, I could uh execute this better. I can fucking add a better hook to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, re-say those words yeah. in a different cadence, whatever. Cause I'm, I'm very, uh, like, obsessed with the music. You know, I, I don't, I overanalyze in a way, but I just fucking hear everything. You know, I'll hear like a fucking, a tune, uh, a chord out of tune, you know, and I can I can spot that shit out because I pay uh, close attention to detail. You know, I feel like that shit's mad important. It is. But uh, so with that with mm -hmm. that said, as someone who overanalyzes, what areas do you feel you need to improve in? In music. In music business. Yeah. Uh, not maybe not just necessarily music. Uh, I don't know. I can get. I can. You can always get your business better. You know what I'm saying. I can always be a better businessman. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I can start networking more and not being so secluded, you know. So but weird. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just go with the flow. I feel like I'm on the right path I'm supposed to be. But I can, fuck the business part. That's going to always come easy, you know. I feel like I'm just an entrepreneur by nature. I feel like all black people are. We, you know. It's uh, true. For real. We're it's entrepreneurs true. by nature. But, um... Music, I can all. It's, I got so much room to grow in music. I feel like uh, I can get way better. You know, it's good. I acknowledge my progression as an artist and just as a person in life. You know, but I'm, I'm still not satisfied. I'm not happy. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not like complacent. You know, if you that's know, the word. Yeah, content. So uh, I'm always just trying to get better as an artist. You know, just uh, yeah, just just trying to keep making like great bodies of work and just. I want my next shit to blow my last shit out the water. But when you plan to do that? Shit, I don't know. However long it takes. It can be a year. It can be two years. It can be two and a half. But what do you do in your spare time? I live life. You know what I'm saying? I fucking uh, I play 2K. I hoop in real life. But I always be on my music shit. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, doing, I'm always doing something music related. Always. I can sit on that fucking ledge and play the piano. Might do that. That sounds fucking. My life sounds hella boring. But I don't think so. I tour. That's what I do. I don't think so at all. I'm on the road. I think everything that you said up to this point sounds hella exciting. Yeah. It sounds like a fucking adventure. Yeah. It sounds like you picked up a whole lot of shit from a whole lot of different places along the way. Yeah. And you sound like you're able to apply it just at a really young, early age as an old nigga. Boy, that's amazing to hear. I'm so proud of where we are as a fucking culture yeah, and for sure. as a people and as artists. I'm so glad that you sitting here at 21 telling me about a partnership. I'm glad. I'm just glad we're in such a different position Yeah, just because of the funneling of information. And if niggas like you are going to be here for the long haul, that means when you're 30, 32, 33, yeah. you'll be the old head to funnel down some information. Exactly. Each one teach one. It gotta, I feel like Back, like, before motherfuckers weren't doing that. You know they what I'm were. saying? They, they weren't. They were hoarding the information. information yeah. Yo, when I went to... Um, Nigga, watch... Inter you know how I retain a lot of this information? Fucking interviews. Yo, watch your favorite artists. Watch your idols interviews. The gems is all there. For real. It's not... Yeah. It's, the gems is all there. Study the patterns. You know, it's all there. Yeah, because we've left a trail of videos for people to fucking watch. That's why I say I was just saying yesterday that all of this... this Camera to these podcasts is so important because yeah. they're just gonna give information that we wasn't getting before. Yeah, for sure. Oh, shit. In the nineties, niggas told me I would never get a record deal. I was running up to rappers and giving them my shit. And yeah. They told me I'm just never gonna get a record deal that way. Cause yeah, no it's true. What rapper gonna help help you? What rapper's gonna sign the nigga that might be as nice as him, or like, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, and that's another big thing too. I always, I felt like I always been like good at making music, but I had to learn how to like move. 
You know what I'm saying? I was I would walk up That's to a nigga. That's the part that's so understated. Yeah, and for sure, for you, sure. If you don't know how to move, you can't be going. You're not about to do anything by going up to another rap nigga and rap for him. Then you automatically just you blew that. You all you, you automatically just fucked up your relationship now. But if you went to like that rapper's homie, who's just around, be like, yo, bro, you know, just uh, and just build from like, yo, I make beats. You know what I'm saying? Here's a flash drive. Like, you know, I don't know if you know anybody who, you know, build relationships organically. You know, organically. Instead of just going, niggas go straight for the home run. Niggas see a nigga will see whoever and just fucking like, oh, this is my chance. This is my big shot and just rap for him. Like, nah, yeah, bro. Yeah, don't you gonna? Yeah, steps. no. Steps. Use them. Don't skip steps, my nigga. This is don't not. Don't skip steps. This is not American Idol, my nigga. You fucking running up on Joe and spitting the sixteen. It's not going, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you burn a bridge. <laughs> oh, no, for real. <laughs> nigga, I, I'm, and I'm saying this because I used to be that nigga. You know what I'm saying? I, it took me those times for a nigga. Like, man, get the fuck out of my face with that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It took that to happen numerous times for me to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not personal to Yeah, y'all. nah, yeah, nah. It's not like, yeah, everybody do that, you know? But it's just, uh, it's just like now you see the, uh, niggas like commenting, be like, yo, check my music out. You know, under everybody post, mm-hmm. but them niggas be blowing the fuck up a year from like <laughs> in, in like a year. Which really? Is, yeah, for sure. Oh shit, I don't know. Yeah, you nah, for real. Them. Like them niggas, pay attention to them niggas in your comments, bro. Who be like, yo, listen to that uh, link in my bio, because them niggas will uh, fuck around and, re- and yeah. blow the fuck up. I seen it happen. I seen it happen for real. Yeah, but all right, I, all right. I go, I go to one of them links and I hear it, and it's ass. <laughs> it happen. That, that be happening for sure. It's but no, be. what if it's not? But I'm saying, what what if it's not? Yeah. Like what I'm doing. All right, now yeah. what, what I'm what I'm doing. Now I got an artist. Now I'm about to take you somewhere. Yeah, it ain't shit you can do. That's that nine times out. Of, I'm not saying like that's the wave. I know. I mean, I've raced all that shit out of my shit. Yeah. But I guess you do have to promote that way now. That's good for these guys, man. I don't have nothing else. I'm 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 pleased. Cool. <laughs> What's next? Uh, working on. I got a bunch of music. You still, yo, you've alluded to some shit. I asked you what the fuck you and her was up to, and you kind of ain't tell me. You just said y'all got a bunch of songs in the stash. Yeah, we got some shit in the stash. Cause it, people they ain't just got a bunch of songs in the stash. Yeah, they ain't yeah. just in the stash. What y'all doing with them? Oh, uh, we. I think she got an album that's about to come out. Yeah, but uh, some, yeah, she has a fire album that's about to come girl. out. I heard some of it. Oh, wait a second. It's fire. That's all I'm going to say. Give me one more adjective. Just one more adjective. It's hard. Oh, I should have said not hard. It's fire. I know it is. But uh, I already know it is. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's all, all this stuff is just in the, it's uh, just, just letting it happen organically and naturally, like I was saying, just through music, like everything. That's the word of the day, organic. You know, it is. And, and it, it really... Always should be. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I mean, not if niggas don't put value in it, and I guess not if niggas don't see results from it. So yeah. they try to manufacture some shit. Yeah. The only shit that you said was kind of like refreshing to hear. I forgot that like normally I'd be sitting here talking to niggas for hours, but the new acts, it never goes like that because mm. y'all are new acts. It's only yeah. about so much we talk about. But y'all don't normally be this uh, in tune. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot I was sitting there talking to a 21 year old a few times. <laughs> Not to be ageist. I don't yeah, want to do yeah, that. No, that's straight. That. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Corday. Appreciate it, boss. No, I appreciate yes, you, sir. man. I, I'd like to give you my phone number. Oh, damn. Honest, man. Thank or, you. Organically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said it's 310 what? <laughs> hey, no, I wouldn't have a 310. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, that was wrong. <laughs>